I've had such good luck with my thumb sling thunderheads recently that I thought I would make a short tutorial video on how to make an inexpensive simple one for yourselves. Before I get started though, I want to show you my favorite one that I've made to date. This one is made out of Osage Orange, one of the hardest woods in North America. It's got a uh, three quarter inch central bore. It's about an inch deep. It's about an inch and a quarter. It's about an inch and a quarter in diameter and about an inch and a quarter tall, giving me a sidewall and top thickness of about a quarter inch all the way around. My cordage is made out of four strand, two ply, reverse wrapped artificial sinew. And I've adjusted my length so that it's three inches from the bottom of the wooden cap to the top of the leather thumb sling. The way I attached it all together was I took a rat tail file and I carved a small groove from the bottom to the top of my cap across the top and then back down the other side and you can't see it but around the body of the the cap I also carved in another groove not quite a eighth of an inch thick or rather eighth of an inch deep and when I was ready to put it all together I laid the cordage across the top of the cap and I used some more artificial sinew and whipped it really tightly, whipped it all together, and then I tied off the tails with a, a simple square knot at the end. I'll show you how I do that a little bit later on uh, when we build our, our, our simple uh, thumb sling thunderhead. This one took me several hours to build. I did have to, to cut the main bore with my uh, drill press, but the rest of it I cut out with uh, some hand saws, uh, uh, some sharp chisels, I used some wood files, flat files, rat tail files, uh, I used my pocket knife, some sandpaper, and when it was all done I rubbed some oil into it just to make it look nice. Like I said, this one took me a while to make, and it took me maybe 30 or 40 minutes to reverse wrap the artificial sinew for my cordage. This one took me a while to make, it's really nice, it works wonderfully. And you might be inspired to make one really nice like this after you build a simple and expensive one and give it a try and, and, and learn how to use it well. The one we're going to learn how to make today though in this video uh, uses some simpler parts. You may have some of this laying around the house in, the, in a junk drawer and a spare parts box somewhere. First thing you're going to need is a Schedule 40 PVC half inch end cap. And you're also going to need a, a short piece of half inch Schedule 40 PVC tubing. If you don't have this laying around the house somewhere, you can pick up these pieces at uh, any local hardware stores Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, you name it, they've got it. Not very expensive. Some other things you're going to need you're going to need a short length of artificial sinew. You're going to need a little bit of micro paracord and you're going to need some scrap leather. These last three items you can pick up at any uh, crafting store. I got a lot of this stuff at Hobby Lobby. You can buy uh, 30 foot spools of artificial sinew for two or three dollars. Likewise you can get uh, micro paracord and an assortment of colors in uh, small bundles for two or three dollars a piece. And I believe that the uh, scrap leather is sold by the pound. So gather up all your materials and uh, stay with me. I'll show you how to build one of these things uh, pretty simply. I'm not going to go through the tools you're going to need right now. Uh, you'll see them as I use them through the video. And if you don't have some of the tools, I'll show you where you can skip some steps. So stay tuned. We're going to build a nice, simple, highly effective thumb sling thunderhead. Be right back. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is squash our penny. I've got a 
9 16 inch socket and I have taped my penny to the end of that uh, socket. If you don't have a socket set, if you don't have a bench vise, just skip this step. Just leave the penny flat. But if you've got a bench vise and you've got a socket set and you're gonna need a big ball bearing, if you've got these items, let's round out and uh, put a nice big divot into this penny. Um, like I said, if you don't have these tools, just skip this step. I uh, taped the penny to the end of the socket to make this next step a little bit easier. I just chuck it up into my vise. And I get it snug. And then I start squeezing it down. Maybe need to reposition just a little bit. Squeeze it as tight as you can get it. See if I can get it off here now. Actually squeezed it down into the uh, the socket. Let me run over here and get a uh, screwdriver and pop it out. I'll be right back and show you what the result looks like. Well, I'd squeezed it so tightly that it wedged down into the socket just a bit, but I uh, took a screwdriver and popped it out. And what you can see is a nicely rounded concave penny that the uh, top of the spindle, uh, our hand drill spindle, can spin inside of. So that's your first step. If you've got a bench vise, a socket set, and a big ball bearing, squash your penny. Make a nice big divot into it. If you don't have that, leave your penny flat. I'll show you what to do in just a second. Hang on. Next step coming up. Okay. Here is our half inch PVC end cap. And for the next step, I need to point out that there's a little ridge down in here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And that's where the tubing seats when you glue it into it. It's three quarters of an inch deep to that little ridge, and I cut a piece of my half inch tubing just a little bit longer than three quarters of an inch. I left myself just a little bit uh, uh, that I can sand off flush a bit later on. So in the next step, now that I've cut that little piece of PVC tubing, is I'm going to take my squashed penny and I'm going to turn it upside down, center it as best I can, and I'm going to use a little bit of super glue to hold it in place while I do some uh, assembly steps just in a few minutes. So first of all, let's kind of hold that in place and tack it together with some super glue. All right, I'm gonna let that set for just a few minutes before I can come back and do anything more. But I want to center my uh, squash penny on the end of that uh, piece of tubing before I glue it into the end cap. So I'm gonna let that set for just a few minutes and I'll be right back for the next step. Okay, so the 
Uh, penny has had a chance to, or the super glue holding the penny to the top of that uh, piece of PVC has had a chance to dry, so we're ready to move on to the next step. It turns out when I when I press this, when I press this into my end cap, there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the penny and the bottom of the end cap. And so what I like to do is take just a couple of small pieces of uh, cardboard and and throw them in. I just toss them in just like that. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of five minute epoxy, uh, coat the inside of my cap, press this all together, and uh, I'm going to pause the video to do that because this is a five minute quick set epoxy and it'll cure up as I'm talking. But that's generally what you do. You just mix up some five minute epoxy, smear it on the inside of the cap, squeeze it all together, and I'll be right back to show you the result in just a second. Hang tight. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's all glued up. Penny's down in the bottom. I've got a little bit of that tubing that stands proud of the cap. I'm gonna let this cure up for a while while I go eat supper. Then I'm gonna do some sanding. I like to make my work look nice. I'm gonna sand off the letters on the top of this end cap. There's a little ridge here. I'm gonna sand that off. I'm gonna sand this all flush. I'm gonna make it look nice. And when I get done sanding, uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I'm gonna use my power sander, but uh, if you don't have a power sander, maybe you can use uh, some wood files or just whatever you want to use. And if you don't feel like cleaning it up, that's fine. It'll work just fine without being terribly pretty. Uh, functional end cap or a functional thumb sling thunderhead is more important than a pretty one but i'm going to dress it up a little bit and do some sanding and i'll be back and show what the results look like in a little while after supper hang on okay here's our cap after some initial sanding i got the letters off of the the top of the cap I smoothed the sides, got rid of that big bump that was probably left over during the molding process. I'm going to do some more sanding a little bit later on. And later on, I'm going to make sure that I really round over this inner edge. You don't want your spindles to catch on a sharp edge there. So that I'm going to make sure that I radius that over and sand it really, really smooth. That'll be important later on. The next step is I'm going to lay out and start working in the grooves that the uh, thumb sling cordage will lay in. Stay tuned. That's up next. So what I've done next is I have carefully put some construction lines in across the top, down the sides, and around the base of my cap. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some of my rat tail files and work in a little groove across my uh, construction lines. Those grooves will be maybe a sixteenth of an inch deep or so. That's going to take me a while, probably take me better part of an hour to get that all accomplished. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to sand it nice and smooth when I'm done. I'll show you a little bit of the work during the, uh, during the uh, middle of the process. But I'm not going to show you the whole thing. That would be pretty tedious for a video to watch. All right, so stay tuned. See what I do next. Well, here it is. It didn't take me quite an hour to 
work the grooves in. Took me about 45 minutes and that included some time with some uh, sandpaper to do some light hand sanding. We've got a groove across the top, down both sides and around the base about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom. And I also took some time, I lightly sanded the inside of the bore and I took uh, the smallest rat tail file that I've got and I rounded over that inner edge and I sanded it really well. So it's nice and smooth. This is pretty much the final version of this cap for our thumb sling thunderhead. But I'm a teensy bit of a, an overachiever, so I'm going to paint it just for fun. Uh, you don't have to. If you'd like to quit at this point, that'd be fine. I'll show you the result in just a few minutes. The next thing we need to do is consider the uh, thumb slings that you're going to cut out of your scrap leather. You need to kind of cut these to fit your own thumbs. This is what I came up with. I ended up cutting pieces of leather that were four and a half inches long from end to end. I cut them out in rectangular pieces to start with and they're one inch wide. And then I took a uh, a big coin and traced out the a circular shape and uh, cut it just to round off the edges and make it look nice. And I also have a tool for making holes in leather. If you don't have a tool like this for making holes in leather, just pound a hole in it with a big nail. That'll do. Uh, the only thing I suggest you do not do is cut a vertical hole with a pocket knife. The, the leather strap will tend to tear loose when you do that. But again, what you need to do is cut this to fit your thumbs. Your fingers may be bigger or smaller than mine. I started with it four and a half inches long, an inch wide. I rounded off the ends just to make it look nice. I cut holes, oh, I don't know, about three eighths of an inch from the end. I use my hole punch. You can pound it out with a nail, whatever you do. Just, just make a hole in it, that'll work fine. Okay, we're almost done. Well, welcome back. It's actually a couple of days later. I ended up spraying my PVC end caps with three coats of paint and then I set it to dry and I got distracted. So it took me a while to get back to my little project, but it turned out really nice, don't you think? If you're going to paint your PVC pieces, it's important to use a paint that uh, will adhere well to plastic. I used some inexpensive Rust-Oleum American Accents paint. The important part is down here it says it bonds to plastic. That's really important. Some paints will just kind of make like a candy coating on the PVC and eventually flake off under use. So pick something that uh, bonds to plastic. But again, you don't have to paint it if you don't want to. Um, I've also taken the time to uh, tie my thumb slings together with some micro paracord. I switched to black instead of my purple. I thought that that would look better with uh, my red cap. Uh, the thumb slings are tied to the paracord with just a, a bola knot. I trimmed, a, I trimmed the loose ends, fused it, and then I used a, a drop of super glue on the knot just to keep it from coming loose over time. It's also important to point out that I adjusted the length of my paracord so that uh, from the bottom of the cap to the top of the leather slings, it's about three inches. It may be just a little bit shorter than that because paracord will tend to stretch a little bit under load. The last thing I need to do to finish off this little easy PVC thumb sling thunderhead is to whip the uh, thumb slings and the cord onto the cap. I'm gonna do that off screen because I'm gonna take my time, uh, tie it really tightly, and try to make it look as nice as I can. 
Um, but just in case you haven't done any whipping in a while, I thought I would show you. I've just got a little dowel rod here, and I've got a, a piece of my artificial sinew that I'm gonna use in just a few minutes. First thing you do is you make yourself a bite, just a bend. And you lay that along whatever you're gonna to whip to, in this case, just my little dowel rod. And then I start making wraps. Now, if I was trying to whip the end of a rope that I didn't want to fray, I would lay my successive wraps side by side, but that's not what I'm interested in now. What I want to do is tie this cordage onto this cap as tightly as I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlap my wraps. Typically, it takes me seven to eight good wraps to get it tight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it enough to fill that groove down at the bottom of my PVC cap. And once I get done, I'll take the tail of my running in and run it through the loop left over by that initial bite. Just like that. And then I'll pull the standing end tight. And that's what whipping looks like. And then usually what I'll do is I'll take these loose ends and I'll tie a quick square knot. and finish up just like that. Again, I'm gonna do this off screen because I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna tie it really tight. I'm gonna make it lay, lay down flat and look as nice as I can. All right, uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes. Well, here's the final product. This is my finished PVC thumb sling thunderhead. I whipped the uh, thumb slings on with my artificial sinew as I mentioned before, I finished up with a square knot. I actually took a little drop of super glue and, and put it on the knot to keep it from coming untied over time. It really looks quite nice, doesn't it? I really like uh, the artificial sinew for this last step for, for several reasons. First of all, it really looks nice in this application, but it's also really strong. Um, one single strand of artificial sinew has a tensile strength of about 75 pounds. Another thing that I like about it is it, it's kind of flat. I can wrap it on top of itself really nicely and fill that groove uh, as I wrap my whipping real tightly. So I like that it's flat. And it's also waxed, so it's not going to slip, it's not going to come untied. Uh, my, my, uh, my micro paracord is not going to slip out from underneath it. It's just going to stay really secure. It's going to stay probably till I wear it out. It'll last for years, most likely. All right, that's the finished product. The only thing I have yet to do is uh, give it a test drive and christen it with its first ember. That's coming up next. All right, it's time to christen our new PVC thumb sling thunderhead with its first ember. And today I'm going to be using ironweed and my fireboard is going to be white pine. I really like ironweed because the smoke smells a lot like incense. All right. Lots of smoke. Big fat ember. Just that easy. All right, folks, 
I think in the history of fire making, there's never been an easy way, easier way to get a quick, big, fat hand drill ember than by use of a thumb sling thunderhead. I hope you'll give it a try and hope you'll have as much success as I have. Have a nice day.